Stop it and then record me. Wait a minute, no. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey, dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. Oh, the fields we go. So, staple gun ain't working, it's all jammed up. When your woman calls you, when you're standing on a ladder and you're installing Christmas lights, let me wipe you off. And you're trying to make money and she calls you up and she says, out of the blue, who is this bitch trying to add you on Facebook? After like 300 years. Is this an ex-girlfriend of yours? From like 20 years ago? And you say. Listen here baby. I only. Have eyes for you. And all the little cute things that you do. And I would never do anything. To hurt our trust because I only love you that's what you tell your woman well that's what you should be telling her but what you really want to tell her is <laughs> listen here you crazy woman <laughs> I'm working so I can pay the bills and if you we having those crazy thoughts, then I think that. One second, I think that I'm at the punchline. I think that you should be hitting the hills. See, man, you ruined my punchline, man. Paying the bills and hills rhymes. Yes, we gotta be somewhere in an hour, but this YouTube video is. Well, it's, it's important. This is important. All right, so. I'm having a bit of a frustrating morning. Just, uh, just you know, the landscape business. And I go to this this dump site where there's mulch. Like so I've never been in the city, and I've never even been over here because we're doing a landscape job over here. I'm like, whatever. I found that find this random landscape yard because I need mulch. And I pull up, and look who the hell I run into. He's trying to get a. A load of leaves out of the back of his truck. Mr. Darius Freeman. What's going on? <laughs> so you did the pallet and the rope trick? Yeah. Mine didn't work out as good, but I'm going to get it right the next time. We were using pallets like that, and then... Ah, uh, that one's okay. It'll break faster, but... Because it's thin. Yeah, I got about 20 of these things out. This is a good chain. Is this thing a gas hog? No, actually it's not. It's pretty good on gas. I thought it would have been too, but it was actually good. It's, I spent about $40. They give me about four days out of week. You got that from Home Depot? Or where'd you get that fleece? Huh? Uh, Menards. Yeah. I love this thing. Now this is what you call a motherfucking work truck, dude. <laughs> I was on Craigslist all night. I got no sleep. You ever stay up obsessed and looking at trucks and shit? Looking at trucks. Oh, I could just, I, I could, I could fucking get that. Oh, it's got a little bit of rust, but it'd be perfect. Yeah, I mean, we're going to tear them off anyway, so why exactly. not get a rusty one? <laughs> That's the whole point. I paid, what, $1,700 for this thing? That's 2500 Oh, yeah. Runs like it's new, so it's good for me. No, open the tailgate again, because I have to show them. I'm getting so much satisfaction out of this, you don't understand. All right, watch, look at this tailgate. Look how it's fucking rusted. Oh, I love it, man. All right, now close it. Watch what this motherfucker has to go through to close this tailgate. If it even closes, though. If it even closes. Oh, you now he's gonna get it in that side. It's a pain in the ass. It's frustrating. You son of a bitch. Oh, he got it that time, <laughs> first try. 
You know how good that feels to just know that that we're not the only one. And look at this. This shit's all dangling, all nice and crispy. I love it, dude. Look at this. Oh, that's a landscaper's truck. This shit's all bent. Here, let's see what mine looks like. This side's all bent, doesn't even close. We'll call this the tailgate party. So I had to have this. Condition of mine. <laughs> but I, ow, oh, fuck. All ground off and uh, we, we re-welded couplings from like advanced auto supply because it was literally falling apart. This thing would have fell off in traffic. And now this is so bent out from ripping the pallet out that when you close it, only one side hooks. See that? Oh, because it's dead. Yeah, I see. And so, I mean, it is what it is. And then we'll like take a stick to get all the random bullshit out so you don't cut your hands on the rust. Go ahead and do yours. Oh, yeah, yeah. inside Becky's nip and tuck right now um, in Berkeley. This restaurant is awesome. Yeah. All right, dude. Now this is what you call some scary ass, high ass gutter cleaning. Way down on that ledge is just concrete, dude. <laughs> What's up, it's Keith. Wrapping up all these gutter cleanings for the season. Hey, I don't know if I'm in a melancholy mood or what, but um, I'm actually taping with my cell phone because my camera's gone. But something with you. Do you ever have this? At least once a day. You know how like you're working and your mind's just tripping off. You're just thinking about your life, thinking about all types of stuff. Sometimes you're thinking about scary shit. Sometimes you're smiling, thinking about. You know what I mean? That's the what the mind is for, right? Well, do you ever get this? Sometimes I feel like I'm like in a big courtroom and I'm about to be hung up to dry and there's like this Rubicon that I'm crossing and the smallest little tiny decision can either like put me in doom or put me in, uh, I can continue to the next round. And it's the strangest things. Like I go up on a gutter to blow out, blow out gutters on a steep roof or something. I'm like, Keith, you could die and end up in a wheelchair for the rest of your life if you just trip. Or it's almost like it's been brainwashed in my head since I was a kid. And do you have this stuff? I, I was a Lutheran. I was confirmed in a Lutheran church. So I had to go to church all the time when I was a kid. I had a pastor dragging me around the church telling me I was literally going to go to hell if I didn't go to Sunday school. And I also had parents that were real paranoid, like my father, real paranoid, always telling me, Keith, one little tiny wrong thing could change your life forever. One little thing and your life is over. So this brainwashing is stuck in my head and I'm just out trying to make a living, bro. And I'm sitting here all paranoid, freaking looking around at every little thing, afraid to step on a crack. Like almost like a, I don't know, the times in your life when, you, when you're really, you feel like you're being hung up to dry and you are at the mercy uh, of a courtroom you're at the mercy of someone else you're at the mercy of the universe because you're going through so much struggling let me go where you can hear me i've had these times where i felt completely frustrated and stranded like like i was going down the hole man and only by the mercy of god did i make it through so when you go through that type of stuff it feels like any moment that could happen again. Any moment the rug can be pulled out from underneath you and you could be in a state of absolute like shock again. I heard Will Smith talk about this on uh, some like the Today Show or something. He's a multi-hundred millionaire, right? And he says he's still in fear, like a poverty type of fear all the time and in a tightwad with his money. Uh, I used to work at that little collision shop. That sucked. 